Okay, so Alistar, Talia, Renekton is banned. They end up going with the Kaisa here. Okay, interesting. Ha. They actually got away with not getting Thresh taken away from them. So you have Thresh Ophelios into Kaisa Alistar. Should be a really good lane for Thresh Ophelios. You win that pretty hard bot lane. Um, bans. So I wonder if a Zoe ban might come through. I think Zoe is super OP, by the way. And not enough teams are prioritizing it that high in the West, but it's prioritized super high in like Asian Asian regions. It's highly prioritized in Korea, at least in the games I watched. It's highly prioritized in China. I think it's super broken, has a good lane into almost everything. The only thing that people play into Zoe with like any success is, is normally either you play TF or Galio and you try to just out roam it, um, or you play Syndra, which can actually like win fights it, it versus the Zoe in lane, but yeah. I don't know. Doesn't Zoe struggle really hard against engaged comps? Well, the thing about Zoe is she's really flexible in a lot of different comps because of the fact that she can like do so much before teams can even engage and the fact that she gets shove in lane, right? So if people are playing engage comps, normally that means that they're playing with like teams that are, or champs that are not super, super good at laning. So what you can do is you can run like a power jungler with Zoe and normally you just win 2v2 and you get an advantage from there. Like it's very rare that Zoe will play in a game and there'll be nothing that the Zoe can do and it's just a bad pick. That's why you see teams pick it like first sometimes. Like you literally see, see LPL teams like first pick of the entire draft, they just go Zoe. Because they know that if they just play the game normally and, and they're able to just like play an aggressive jungler and they, they, they actually make use of the fact that she is so oppressive, they're gonna have a good chance of winning the game, so yeah. And the Jace here. So it's probably Jace top into the GP. It's probably a Jace top here. What is the mid lane pick going to be? I mean, there's a lot of things that are available. Like, he can literally play anything he wants here. But it's blind, so I would say Zoe's the best pick. Oriana for perks. Okay. I just went on a long rant about Zoe, and then he didn't pick it. Saligo. Just pick Zoe for me, man. Please. Don't pick Sandra. No. It's up, right? It's up. Why? Why don't they play it? Okay, good slow. Thought I kills him. Nice. Afro held the hook the whole time. It was well played by them, honestly. The oldest trick in the book, dude. You wait until the person goes up, tries to last hit a minion, boom. Flash play. Now you're committed. Now you're fucked. Is Afro Boo underrated? Yeah, people don't think he's good anymore. I think he had bad splits, and I've, th and I've thought he's had good splits. And last time, last split he just played, I thought he was a top five support. You're saying Perks is a Lin Kingdom player? No, Perks is a flex player. He can literally do whatever you need him to do at any point. That's why he's a f***ing great player. So if you give him Orianna, he can play Orianna. If you make him play Galio, he can roam the whole game and play f***ing Galio. Generally speaking, he is he is more towards the side of being like a roamer, facilitator, like making plays around the map type player. Like, so I, I recently got that Reddit thread, right, where somebody was just calling out my game knowledge because they said that like Perks is a Lane Kingdom type player and I just didn't know what, uh, what I was talking about. Um, right, this is a good overall play from C9. It's just, Dig has no business being pushed up to this turret. This is so, so crazy bad for Dig to be up at this turret. It's so bad. It's so f***ing bad. Like, look at the situation that you're in right now. Look at the map. You have no f***ing turret topside. You just saw them all try to make a play on you top, so you know that there's three of them top at least. And honestly, they probably don't even need Fudge there to TP behind. So, like, the idea that they're pushed up to this turret here, when they could easily have Talia just wall behind and they have nothing they can possibly do, makes absolutely no sense. Like, they got the wave in, and now they're greeting for plates for no reason. This is just disgusting. They just threw the entire game. Now they're, like, losing. So, Dragon is up in 17. I guess C9 has decided to give it. They're giving Dragon. But they gave turret and gave Dragon. It makes no sense. Like, they could have just decided that... I mean, I don't know. Oh, I guess Dig is like also not playing around Dragon. I don't know what the f is going on, dude. Does no one care about Dragon? Hello? The Rift Herald at 16 minutes doesn't matter at all. What the f is going on? This is like, so Dig should have been on this Dragon immediately when they saw Kai'Sa top. Now C9 gets away with f***ing murder, putting the Kai'Sa top when Dragon's already spawning. And now it's like a 5v5 fight. Now they actually have to play the 5v5. This is like, this is slow. This is just like, Really slow gameplay. We didn't see this once in LEC. We haven't been seeing this in LPL. This is just terrible. And then they give Harold too, so they don't even trade it. Like, oh, I don't even know, man. Just literally, just go back and watch the last two minutes. This is so slow. It's so, like, so uncoordinated. It's just not there. It's just fucked up. It's just fucked up. Straight up. Like, LEC wasn't clean by any means, but at least basic stuff like this wasn't fucked up. Dragon's up 15 seconds. They should be talking about it a minute beforehand. Are we there? Are we not? Dig... 
should be definitely going towards the dragon here. They shouldn't care about Herald. They scale great. They have Aphilios. They have GP. They can win through through Dragon Soul. You know it's going to be a pretty good uh, soul, or you know it has a chance to be a pretty good soul. Um, either way, even a, even a fucking um, Cloud Soul would be pretty good on their team comp. Aphilios likes Cloud Soul. Um, Dardock can use Cloud Soul. You have GP loves Cloud Soul because it just gives him a bunch of fucking movement speed he normally wouldn't get otherwise. Syndra loves Cloud Soul. So you have a team where the Soul is going to be useful for you no matter what. Why are you not stepping up in advance? Uh, okay, Perks is just dead out of nowhere. Damn, he was like the most fed member, so him dying at this point is actually pretty fucking sad, to be honest. Dragon's in 30 seconds. Perks has TP, so maybe they could contest it. There's no ulti on Aphilios, no ulti on Lilia. So maybe we could get a 5v5 here. I don't know why they're trying to make a play top. So they're actually just deciding to sack Dragon here. There's no flash on Fake God, so Fake God's 100% dead. So I guess they try to kill him, and then they try to turn that into a potential Baron. Uh, I mean, Vulcan's really chunk now. I guess they can't do it either. So that's three dragons, and Ocean Soul is going to be coming up pretty soon for uh, Dig. In five minutes, they'll have the Ocean Soul win condition. So it's going pretty bad for C9 right now. Like, they're losing really hard in terms of game state. Perks movement wins games. What do you mean? He got hit by everything. <laughs> but the f this has got to be. This has been Perks' best game this split. Sure. But you can still tell, like, how even though things didn't work, you can see, like, his attempted map movements over Saligo. He was trying to do things outside of lane. None of them worked up until that, but he's like winning the lane 1v1 and then he's roaming too. But he can't beat like everyone 1v1. Like he would never be able to do this to Jensen, Syndra. Well, the other thing is Saligo's lost on the map. Like Saligo just realized right now, look at where he is right now. He just realized right now he needs to push top. He doesn't actually know how to play like side lanes as a mage yet. A lot of mid laners in, in LCS don't know how to play side lanes. So because Perks just got this push in, he can now recall buy his item, group with his team, and then potentially get something else done while Saligo is still trying to, to push this wave out, because Saligo has to push the next wave. Perks doesn't need to catch this wave until the wave after this. The wave that's spawning at 45 is the next one he has to catch based on where his turn is. It doesn't look like there's anything on the map, so he has the opportunity to just walk with his team here and then go back top. No barrels on GP. Sven's positioning around the side. They have no one that could really like flank and kill Sven. Like, Dig's team comp, they all have to fight together. There's no one that can, like, 1v1 somebody on the side. Wow, Dardock just got one shot. Really well played from Vulcan. Baiting himself to get hooked. R, Q, Flash. Nice. Well played. So what Blabber should do now is try to get a wall. He should stand up and try to get a wall. Like, either wall them in, wall them off, anything. Okay, Afro just killed himself. They can get Baron off this. I mean, they can just go Baron. Just go Baron. They win the game. This is, like... I don't know. This is not a convincing game at all. Not a convincing game one bit. But you know what? They they did it. They they look like they're gonna win. Whatever. This is really bad because Ocean Soul is spawning. Perks kind of just walked up and Vulcan died because of it. Well played from Perks hiding the ball in the wall. Oh, he's dead. At least they got Dragon. <laughs> At least they got Dragon while Perks was doing whatever he was just doing. A minute and 12 for Baron, so Dig will have an opportunity to push here. Regardless, it's not the end of the world because they luckily died at, like, the best timer possible. Okay. Sven with the Flash Gale Force. Dardock around the side. Fudd just getting autoed for no reason. Uh, Blabber? That W was not it. Oh my god, wait. Okay, it's kind of good. It looked kind of strange, but it, it worked out. They can just end mid. Nice. Perks is TP too. Whole enemy team is dead. They just won that 4v5. But I mean, Saligo kind of it did before anything happened, so it was like 5v5. Or 4v4, rather. Fudge did something. Come on. We're not getting hyped over that play from Fudge. Alright. Wait, they can't end? Oh, I guess 7 seconds on, on Saligo. I guess they can end? I figured if they all went together... With Perks TP, they could end. Maybe not. I'd have to rewatch it. It looked like my initial verdict was they can end, but I guess not. Oh boy, I can't wait for TSM versus TL later tonight. Oh, that's actually a pretty high match. TSM, TL is tonight. It's like hype on paper because it's TSM, but like I would expect TL to win pretty hard with how the teams have been playing. They get Baron off of it too, so they can just go mid top. 
push mid top i think they just should have everyone top except for fudge fudge should split i mean you don't really have to worry about dig like flanking or doing that much in this game it's like one of the easier team comps to play against this this lilia gp syndra affiliates because all the the players have to play the game the same way and they have to like fight as a unit it's just a straight ball comp all the time no one can flank so i feel like this doesn't really expose the team as much as other comps do Pick Renekton for someday. No, somebody's going to take Renekton either way. Trust me. He's just a Renekton type of guy. Dude, Renekton is so good here. What is going on? Pick it. It's broken. Someday's so good at it too. Aphilios Thresh? Oh wait, Thresh is banned. Aphilios set. That's just because they want to take set away from Huhi. That's the main reason. All right, there. They get Renekton anyway. Dude, what is this? Renekton is broken. Early pick it. So I wonder what, what Niles is going to play. So what I'd like to see here from Niles would be like Kennen maybe. Actually, depends. If they can't play AD mids, maybe they could play Lucian top into Renekton. But that's even scary. Like you have to play so well on that pick, actually. Is that a Kali? Yup. But a Kali blind is kind of scary. Quinn is great into Renekton. Quinn sh it's on Renekton. But what I've seen is not many people can actually play these matchups well enough for it to matter. So it's set versus a Kali mid. I wonder if he's actually going to be able to stop a Kali from farming. Who he's on Graga support. Okay, interesting. Gragas support versus Alistar. I mean, I think that Gragas should have value here. Uh, someday? Okay, closer hits the spear. That was really ugly. That dive was f***ing horrific, but it worked out. So you have Soul coming up for 100 Thieves in 15 seconds. They have control of River too, and they can win any fight. Quinn is just absolutely f***ing useless here. Unlucky that who he has to stopwatch it. I mean, it was a well-timed stopwatch because he would have died there, but it's, it sucks that he had to. You don't want to have to stopwatch like that. Okay, this fight is just a cluster. The Prowler Claw from Someday. Okay, who he literally tried to execute them with a full tank Grog Assault. Blaze all of is dead now. <laughs> uh, now this is just recalling. And Akali hit him with the flash Q. All right. Dude, look at newbie just flash and then headbutt in someday towards Niles. Holy sh! That's fucked up. Close to Mike and slept. No, he doesn't. Demonday's got really good position. What the f was who he's gro Oh, the Gragas and the Alistar are so troll this game. Oh, they're playing it so bad. I hate watching this. Hunter Thieves is one of the be better teams that we have too, and they play like. Oh man. What's happening? Why? Are they doing it again? Oh my god. What the f was that Prowler's Club? <laughs> What's going on? Make it stop. I'm losing my mind. Okay, Demonte. Caps would have hit that even like a second. Okay. Now they're now they getting make it look clean at the end. <laughs> you know, nice. We did it. So 50 minutes until the TSM subreddit, dude. Let me see that TSM subreddit. All right, first pick Lilia. So I wonder what TL is going to play here. I mean, they could just thrash Aphilios right now if they like it. Camille. Well, I guess Renekton is banned, but I mean, this is cool because I want to see if Huni can actually play the counters to Camille. Like he might just pick Gangplank or something, but I wonder if he'll pick Jax, Fiora, like those picks. I don't think he will. I don't think he's good at those champions, so we'll see. Okay, Galio from either Jensen or Core JJ. It's still technically a flex. Is Poe just gonna like grab the Oriana? I mean, they could just go Thrash Philios right here. Kaisa, okay. So they're taking Kaisa away because they don't want to give the enemy bot lane Kaisa Galio because it's like a nice little comp right there. Where are they gonna go with it though? 
Do they want Alistar for Sword Art, maybe? Maybe they just leave the pick for later? Okay. Syndra from PoE. wonder what Jensen's going to end up going then. All right, Nidalee. Damn. Gamil, Nidalee, and Galio on the same team comp. Could be good. Ready for the Huni Nar? Yeah, it's coming, dude. I mean, Nar is, is not good into Camille, but apparently it can win after, like, first back. It's tough, though. Why do we... Oh, my God. He actually picked a Nar into fucking Camille. Oh, God. It's so bad. I just didn't think he would pick it there because it's just so, like, obviously bad. Okay, Alfari is just clapping Huni already. He's going to lose this lane. Huni's going to lose this lane pretty easy. Oh, my God. What was that E from Huni? Huni's going to die soon. Huni's gonna have to burn his flash. Look, he already has his flash blown, but he just doesn't know it yet. Okay, it's fine. Huni's going to ward right now. I don't know if he actually saw the Nidalee there. I don't think he did. Oh! Santorin got the grump with that spear. He's come to play, dude. Santorin's back in an A. Teal cams are sponsored by EG. Yeah, that's surprising. I mean, they're... Oh, wait. He's just dead. Are Tactical and Core JJ literally just going to solo kill every single fucking lane? Are they actually just going to solo kill every fucking lane? They actually just solo kill every lane all the time. The loss just went back in and entered. Holy f They actually just solo kill every game, man. How is it a thing? How is it possible? I mean, Alfari is just shitting on Huni. This is what Camille Nar looks like, and Camille scales better too. Camille gets to the point where uh, Camille just wins split for the rest of the game, and he's already winning lane. At six, when when Nar is mini, they can just set up Camille Galio combos like it's so f top lane. Huni's like already like zero two zero three in my eyes. It just hasn't happened yet. Oh, Speak is dead. <laughs> Holy shit! Wait, why did fucking Galio even ult that? Dude, you can tell that, that Jensen was just not ready for fucking Afari to do that shit. And the Divine Sunder Nar. Holy shit, I gotta retweet my tweet again. Holy fuck. Okay. Maybe Core needed to auto there. Oh my god. Wait, Lost has flash heal and ulti up. And somehow he's just getting one shot by tactical? Like, I don't know what's happening. Doesn't make sense. I need to rewatch what just happened to Lost. Wait, PoE. Honestly, Santor's probably gonna live this. Oh, never mind. I didn't see Lost and Sword Art there. This is gonna be really heavily favored for uh TL though. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, poor Lost. My boy Lawrence. Huni <laughs> with the Vine Sunder putting in work. See, this is the thing. Like, Huni doesn't look like he's underperforming this game based off scoreline. Like, it looks like his teammates are. But his teammates just tried to, like... I mean, obviously his balling got crushed. But he also got crushed. And they had to invest into him to just get him to even. But he got counter pick on the Camille. You know how inexcusable that is? Like, if you're getting draft resource and then you're just hard losing 1v1, it's it's getting really doomed for you. Why does TSM send send as much sad vibes as uh, CLG? Well, it's because even though CLG is worse than TSM, the hope is still alive for TSM fans. So, like, TSM still thinks that their team can be good because they keep on getting these, like, glimpses. Like, they, they won last split, right? And then when they get, like, these upgrades, like, it sounds like it could work on paper. Like, maybe PoE is a slight downgrade to Bjergsen. Hootie might be a slight downgrade to BB, but Sword Art's supposed to be really good, and Biofrost was an issue last year. You know, Doublelift didn't have the best year. He underperformed compared to, like, his normal skill level. And Speak is dead again. Oh, my God. Yikes. That's brutal. So, yeah. I don't know. People think that they could still be good. Or, like, they want to see some progress. But in reality, I mean, the team is, like... It's like a fucking... Dude, I'm going to do another Loco reference. Or, actually, maybe this is a uh, this is an LS reference. I think this is an LS reference. He, he does, like, the thing where he's, like... Oh, it's, like, a refrigerator where, like... If you go into a refrigerator, right? And you have, like, a bunch of strawberries in a container. And you have mold on the bottom and you just take off the top layer of molded strawberries and you put new strawberries on top like it's still fucking molded strawberries right it's like that where because the foundation is is kind of like poisoned here they're they're never actually gonna be a top tier team
Like they can try new coaching staff all they want, but there's like a there's like a certain culture that people talk about when they play for TSM. They always talk about how stressful the TSM culture is. It's like partly from the fans, partly from the org. It's just like the expectations are really really high, and it's not like it's like I mean we've we've heard it before. I forgot who said it. Somebody said it recently. They're like, okay, so you're either gonna win or be depressed when you're on TSM and no one's gonna just win all the time so it's really hard to just not go through periods where you feel depressed as a player playing for TSM and like when you feel like losing is such a negative it, it doesn't actually do what people think it does like that type of stress actually just makes people play worse where a lot of people would view that as like oh like it's motivation you know that's not Bergson has the best mentality in the world yeah, I mean, he's able to withstand it, but he's not the one that ends up in that situation most of the time because he was like the beloved one. He's the golden boy, right? So maybe he gets flagged from the outside, but from the inside in TSM, he's the one that has the most respect. So he's never getting like, he doesn't feel like, for example, how Santorin felt when Santorin played in, uh, on uh, TSM in, in season five. Like, no lie. Santorin was a, was an amazing player. Like, he's been such a good player. Think about his career in the last three years and how much people respect him. Santorin almost never got the opportunity to play in LCS again after what happened with TSM. Like, he just got sh opportunity after sh opportunity. He played a year in Academy, and he was definitely an LCS level player. Went to H2K, which is a bottom team in, in LEC. Got benched because of, like, personal issues and stuff, but he was still, like, one of the better performing players. And then finally, he got a chance with FlyQuest and was able to do something. But, like, think about the fact that Santorin, because of, like, how much harassment he got from TSM fans and because of, like, the narrative. Like, he did play play poorly in, in, in um, summer of, of 2015. Like, he definitely played worse than expected. But he was, like, a 17-year-old kid that randomly got thrown on a team with all this pressure. That was his first year playing in a Tier 1 league. So, like, when he lost to other junglers that were, like, experienced or good, like, Xmithy or, like, at the time when I was playing, Rush, like, those were... those, And I guess Move, too. Like, I guess Rush, myself, and Move were considered top three. Xmithy was four. He was five. The fact that he was losing to anyone meant that because he was on TSM, he was just going to get absolutely destroyed by the community. And with that level of negativity, it was like he was almost untouchable by orgs. No one wanted him just because of, like, how much everyone was like, oh, he's just an AFK jungler. He doesn't know how to play the game. All he fucking does is, like, farm. He doesn't know how to gank. When, like, clearly that was just a problem that he had for that one split, and he got over that quickly. Like, they didn't, he didn't get, like, my problem with, with that situation is he didn't get a fair chance with TSM. Like, Rush was obviously playing with a lot less stress, and, and Rush was, like, somebody who's rank one from Korea. Xmithy and I had both been playing competitive for, like, five years. Move was talented as well. So you have, like, all those people coming in, and then if he loses to any of them, he's just dog. That's how the community treated him. Where it's like, he's not supposed to beat those guys immediately. So that's, like, the issue is people like that are actually, like, fucking depressed after they're with TSM.